Hello, how is it going? It is Faker. I come at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. And today, I'm super excited to share with you guys a Fizz deck that I've been working on. Now, a little bit of grain of salt. This deck is probably not the most competitive, but I surprised myself quite a lot uh, a couple days ago on stream when I found quite a few wins more than I expected with this Fizz deck that we're working on. Now, I believe that right now the best way to possibly go with Fizz is to do uh, Piltover and Zorn alongside Blidgewater because they we have access to suit up which I think has a lot of potential uh, in this kind of concept where we buff a singleton unit early. Of course there's a standalone in Ionia but PNC has a lot more cheaper spells that can synergize a lot with Fizz and the deck I built was pretty much focused on extreme cycle, extreme cheap cards and re uh, refreshing those cards. Now I also do believe that suit up is like one of the most powerful cards for doing this kind of strategy so we kind of have another reason just to go into PNZ. Now Fizz itself it's kind of tricky because most of the time we want to draw them in the opening hand, but it's not always going to happen. It's actually a 50-50 that you'll draw it in your opening mulligan or off the first draw. So we do feature the Cutthroat card, which is a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one with Elusive and Fearsome, which could possibly be another target for it. But honestly, in the end, we really want to draw Fizz and hope for the best. Let's showcase some games, okay? These games I got, I did strip them from my Twitch channel because I wasn't expecting to find this is much success or these interesting of games and let me tell you these games were crazy so we're actually going to commentate over the footage that i did get it's going to be a lot of fun i do hope you stick around if you enjoy the games leave a like it makes a huge difference to the performance of the video and you know makes it easier for me to figure out what to do next enjoy and i will see you next time all right, so away we go. So just as I said, uh, I'm just going to do a voiceover on these games here as we're just looking for a game right now. So we already had a game just previously to this one, which we kind of lost. It was just it's pretty much all burnt aggro. So I decided I'm not going to change the list. Let's try this again. And this is where all the all the fun begins. Uh, opening hand. So pretty much like we're just looking for the one drop. Like ideally, we honestly got to hit Fizz in the opening hand. It like increases our win rate dramatically. And I think like... Every game I have Fizz in the opening hand this day, we just won. So deck's going to play out roughly the same every game. You play Fizz, you hope to draw suit up on turn two, because that's just ridiculous. But this is a game that we didn't find Fizz in the opening hand. So I'll pretty much just play core creatures just to find some stuff. As we progress through this, I'm probably not going to remember all the plays that happen, but just some of these games are really amazing. So I, I, think, I recommend you stick around because it's going to be a lot of fun. Getting the uh, pilfered goods here is pretty amazing. Just a lot of nonsense happened in these games. That was it was just it was really just something else. So I was really glad to capture these. Hence why we're doing the voiceover because I really do believe that this footage was golden. We managed to find Fizz. Hell yeah! I'm really excited that we stole that repost. Now that I'm looking at it, I wonder what I do with it. I'm just as excited as you guys are. I go for the get excited here. It's clear the play. Like there could be a barrier card that comes out, but uh, best to try and take a risk now. We already didn't find Fizz in the opening hand, so I figured this could give me at least somewhat of a chance. You see my reaction? I'm like so shocked it went through. Oh boy. Okay, so we're gonna start to sell Fizz, right? Yeah, it makes the most sense. Um, so what have I got in here? I got three mana. So I want to give Fizz the um, elusive, right? So I think I'm deciding to play Rummage here or not, or play Get Excited. So we're going to Rummage. Uh, yeah, I'm figuring out what to discard. I actually get rid of the Badger Bear, I'm pretty sure. Nothing else makes as much sense. And a 4-4 four -four would be nice, but like, I feel as if like, if I play a four, like a unit for three mana, it's just not as effective on my Fizz. And I think Fizz is going to apply a lot more pressure. So if I keep cycling my deck and getting rid of cards like Badger Bear, focus purely on the fizz so we get a connection here and getting rid of the badger bear is like okay too because we have more spells to use uh, I, throughout most of these games i kind of wasn't really thinking too much about the fizz leveling up i just kind of spam spells anyway there's probably been a few times throughout these games where i could have possibly like did certain actions with spells to level up fizz in scenarios but i think most of the time it wasn't as relevant uh, we go for the red card here. Clearing both of these units is fine. Like, even though, like, the ranger brings out a 4-4. I'm getting rid of the tracker 2, which, uh, one of Fizz's weaknesses is challenger units. 
So I'll take any opportunity I can get to clear it. I think I figured if he did anything, I'd use the Mystic Shot as well. Just kind of all in. He goes for a single combat. I noticed a common trend with a lot of decks that I versed, and that is with cards that like target my guys, a lot of the time they single combat my TF. Like obviously, there's gonna he's probably gonna be an answer. So it, it might make sense. But there's been scenarios where I've had like one mana or no mana and they've just targeted TF and I thought that's amazing. But maybe that's because no one respects the fish. And so some of these opponents that we versed did not respect the fish a lot. I go for the mystic shot here to conserve the twist of fate. I think I may have hesitated for a moment because I was worried about uh, protecting Fizz. And I thought that may have been like a bait single combat. So we obviously pass. A lot of the, a lot of the like turns that we play, it's a lot of like passing back to the opponent and just constantly waiting for them to respond. It's like playing into a spiders with astrocity, except for like, we're not really under pressure. We literally like, we have more of a reason to pass turns constantly. So you'll see that quite a lot. Don't be too surprised. Oh, he finds suit up. Drawing into suit up is insane. So like, this is the deck. Like, this is getting the suit up on Fizz and I believe it's like one of the best cards for him. It's a, when you draw it, it's a two mana, two, three buff, which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, I'm considering maybe trying out uh, Ionia alongside Fizz. There's certain classes that would make sense. I also looked at Fajord, but there's not enough cheap spells that really work with Fizz. But the reason why I looked at Fajord was clearly for the, um, uh, draw a champion on treat uh, connecting the face here too so we play a sleight of hand I'm pretty sure do we or don't we I may hold back because I'm worried about single combat it's a card I seem to play around quite a lot he plays the bannerman so I'm pretty sure I sleight of hand him still what else he's got I think we get Scythria which is pretty crazy and we'll level up, level up Fizz and I will clear wasn't even thinking about the level up on Fizz <laughs> Getting this suit up on Fizz before he levels up is good too, because he ends up becoming a 5-5. What do we still? More reposts. At this point, he knows what cards I've got in hand. He surrenders. <laughs> I was a bit surprised by his surrender. I figured that the Fizz may have been triggering him quite a lot. But, um, you know, I'll take it if I can get it. Yeah, I think he may have been convinced that I just had the win. But, like, not too sure. Like, it was looking pretty annoying. Like, he knew I had repost. He wasn't aware of the other card I stole, because I was from Pilfered Goods. I go to edit my deck here quickly. I don't know why. No, I'm looking at the, um, I want to change my, uh, get my Moonstruck pour on. Loving that. Betas. Beta testers, dude. Get my emote that I got. I didn't buy many emotes because it kind of, I haven't got the money to do that kind of thing, but you know, that's okay. Some people kind of get a emote, so I'm pretty grateful for what I have. What am I looking for? What the fuck am I looking for? I have no idea. Drink. I left my drink downstairs, that's right. Uh, Thresh Lux. Boy! <laughs> this game got strange. Um, this was definitely a losable game guys but this is kind of like the highlight of some of the crazy stuff that happens with uh plunder and pickpocketing our opponent <laughs> having a little bit of a vietnam flashback at the moment look at this so cutthroat's good so i uh, like after we had these amazing games as well like i figured um the fizz deck still like it's it's it might be competitive but not right now like, it needs a tremendous amount of support. I think the problem with it is that, like, you don't always... Like, you have a 50% chance, basically. I looked at it. You have a 50% chance of having Fizz in the opener if you hard mulligan in your entire hand, including both draws. Both, like, your first draw, I mean. So, I also noticed a common trend with the Coral Creatures is that we oftentimes are hitting Jettison. <laughs> So that that might need to be uh, reworked. The amount of times I hit Jettison was out of this world. But I still don't mind it, and it gives us a discard target as well. But ideally, um, it's not the most best. We, all, we also do pull some... Uh, what are some of the other cards I'm pulling? I've actually forgotten at this point. Rummage. We can sometimes pull Rummages too, which is good. Uh, we've got the... Um, we've got the proc, so we're going to steal some cards. We've got a Grasp with Undying. That's looking pretty nice. 
I do apologize if I'm not going into too much detail with my turn decisions, but I think this is more of an entertainment video at this point. Some of the decisions look pretty straightforward. You might be able to see it. Uh, we rummage. I'm pretty sure we're going to rummage. No, we, we float the mana. We float the mana for some reason. Maybe because I'm not worried about spending it right now and drawing. I think looking for Fizz might arguably be one of the more important things to do, though. Uh, so we rummage. We obviously discard Jason. It's one of the best targets for it. And what else do I decide? I think I get rid of the Augmented Experimenter because their hand's kind of valuable. Well, what am I doing? Oh, I'm considering, like, do I want to, like, go in with the, uh... Yeah, no, I was considering buffing the, um... I forgot the name of the, the one mana card in the field. That's really good. That's not a bad target for Syrup either. The Cutthroat, that's the name of the card. We find some good draws here. So I think it's quite important to have other powerful one drops that can actually interact with your suit up and your uh, buffs. And Prowling and Cutthroat is pretty good. It also has Fearsome, so it can't be blocked by like Shadow Assassins and stuff like that. And it's pretty powerful on turn one. If we don't find Fizz, but Fizz is clearly a lot stronger. Uh, so we're pretty sure we end around here. Floating Man is not too bad for this deck. Oh, I see all these pilfered goods and stuff, and I really want to go in. I want to see what I can steal. He plays Thresh. Cool. Here they comes. Vile Feast, not a bad card. Boy, where is it? In Hapless Aristocrat. Alright, here's the money shot. Here's the money shot. One Ruination. Two Ruination. <laughs> I'm 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 just hysterical at this point because I realize we can pretty much just win the game with these two cards that we stole. You would not believe how incredibly disgusting that is. Like in so many ways, more than another. Oftentimes these decks are only running two ruination. And it's one of the cards that interacts with Fizz. No, oh, that's actually just disgusting. I'm losing my marbles. So now I, I think I'm in a position where I, I start to play for the value. He drops like locks and stuff. I think I buy a turn by just kind of like maneuvering around uh, his attacks and just kind of blocking and saving as much damage as possible. Because I'm going to go for an open attack ideally and then I want him to commit more to the ruination. I think what ends up happening here is a, just a mixture of a couple of like vile feasts in blocks. And then I kind of, I was a bit shocked by this one. He goes to pull the Aristocrat, and then he goes to pull the Call of Creatures. And I'm thinking, why isn't he pulling the um, Elusive Unit? And I think maybe he hasn't got a way to deal with the 1 HP. Anyway, I see an opportunity. Yeah, I think I remember this turn. We, f we figure out a way to uh, clear the Lux this turn without having to ruinate this board, which I'm quite happy with. I think we just do a Vile Feast plus Pocket Aces, and it also keeps our Cutthroat alive. Because I figure, and I think about it, now that I'm looking at this, that if he's pulling the coral creatures, because he doesn't want to pull a cutthroat, he must not have a way to deal one damage. So if I, for example, buff my cutthroat and Vile Feast to Lux, which can't be outbursted by other barrier cards, then Lux goes down for sure, unless he has a buff for it, which would have to be like something that he's not running. Repost, maybe. But the Lux would still die. Anyway, that was a pretty amazing turn. We'll float the three mana here. We're gonna go, go for an open attack. So during this stream as well, I did um, change my deck a little bit later on and early. But for the majority of these games, we ran like the same list. So at the moment I have Plaza, Plaza Guardian in because it makes a lot of sense. I don't know I didn't think of it earlier. But since I started running that kind of Plaza Guardian deck, which I changed a couple of cards for. It wasn't even working as good. But I think, as I said, we may have just got super lucky in these matchups and uh, the competitive value of this deck is probably not understood yet. It could be the way I'm playing too. After having a bit of a review session, I think I focused too much on trying to find Fizz, where I could have been like buffing the cutthroats and stuff. So that may have been my downfall. Um, we go for the Ruination here. I think it committed a fair bit to this. I drop a Thresh because I'm toxic. And I'm sorry if I'm talking too much. Oh man, that was just beautiful. Beautiful. Maybe I should change my webcam position. 
Yeah, it's okay. I like it up there. It's different. I know I'm blocking his uh, little emotes and stuff, but that's fine. Okay, he plays a Thresh. What else does he do here? He hovers a card and then doesn't play it. He has passes there. I'm not sure what that card was. Maybe it was a Broad Awakening. Okay, I play Cutthroat. We're going to suit up the Cutthroat, right? I think we can possibly find some lethals here. Actually, I think I make a bit of a mistake here because I'm thinking that the cards on my bottom right are the Pocket Aces, but they're not the Pocket Aces. I can't remember. I uh, forget the name of the two cards. One of them gives you a minion unit, a unit plus two attack, and one of them gives it a reshuffles your cards into your deck. Yeah, pick a card. That's the one that shuffles, and then Pocket Aces is the one that buffs. So I kind of stuffed up here a little bit. But that's okay. Like, it was, the turn probably would have looked generally the same. Like, I think we're going to play a Cutthroat and Buffer with Suit Up. But then uh, what we do for the rest of the mana is going to be weird. Yeah, it was Broad Awakening. That was the card that was hovering. I don't know why I didn't play it last turn. It could have been saving more mana and developing more. I guess he was worried about... I, I don't really know. Let's uh, steal some cards from him. What do we got here? We got Skidora and Withering <laughs> Withering. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> maybe he was playing around me stealing the Withering Whale from the Pilfered Goods. Because maybe he's not sitting on one in his hand and he thinks, oh, maybe he drew one. Uh, but we just drew one then. I'm not worried about Thresh leveling up at all, by the way. <laughs> There's the fish who making a late appearance this game. The deck can still perform okay, as long as you steal some incredibly valuable cards from your opponent. That next Ruination is just a backbreaker for him. Like, it's just, that's just disgusting. He just got half stoned really bad. Oh, he gets Glimpse value. I think I play Fizz here, another point in the game where I forgot that he's leveling up. I just play Fizz as a bit of a, like, risky play, because I'm like, I'm already doing pretty well. I want to get someone to the board. I would never play Fizz. There's been times where I play Fizz as a 2-1 and I forget about the... Um, I play my turn out expecting him to have 1 HP. But he has 2 HP. Another amazing game. Uh, I kind of cropped out the beginning of it. But uh, we were mucking around with some things. So, I mean, we have Fizz in the opening his hand. So ironically, Suit Up has to go back into the deck because we want to hope to draw it. So we don't ever keep suit up in the opening hand I don't think even though it is a buff that we want to search for there's always a chance to find it later and it's always kind of scary playing Fizz on turn 1 but against Shadow Wilds and Demacia it's okay when we're on the uh, opener attack odds obviously we don't swing because he can block into Fizz and at this point Fizz is on the field here we go this is where we want to be I don't think we've had a game yet where we've had Fizz in the opener or have we I figured already um, no blocks Pretty sure we just play Coral Creatures here. The one drop usually is playable. And he's card to get Fizz right now is Vile Feast. You're, I think I've often seen players will go for it on the early turns, but because we're I'm just running so many cheap spells in this deck just for that reason. And uh, Coral Creatures always finds us something playable. Drury Rig's a good one too. So we can find Drury Rig, Jettison, um... Rummage, which is really good. He goes for the Vile Feast. I've obviously got the answer here. Pretty sure I'll go for the Rummage here. Maybe I'll just drop the Drew Rig for now. I think Rummage makes the most sense. I get rid of the other cool creatures too. I figure I'm going to get some value from Slider Hand in this matchup. Yoink. Very lovely animation. See, I'm looking for something. He must have been doing something. I'm not sure what I was doing. Probably fixing up something on the stream. Oh, TF. <laughs> so, cards I'm worried about if I open up with this is... Black Spear, ironically, is a card that can deal with it. So I think I go to swing and then I pull them back. Yeah, it makes the most sense. I'm playing around uh, Black Spear. I think the card's called. It's the one card that can get me here. I don't think there's anything else that exists. In Shadow Isles or Demacia, outside of single combat, but he has no units that can deal the damage needed. So the spells in our hand are a little bit expensive for where I'd like them to be, 
but at this point I'm gonna go in with the TF and get the draw plus the refill. Obviously I don't really want to red card his board. I, th I consider it because maybe he's gonna look for some value plays next turn. And ironically he um if I had a red carded there anyway, if he had the value plays, he would have done it like glimpse and stuff, which he actually did. So I kind of realized at this point that the red card was a mistake all around. I don't know why I never would have considered it, but you got to consider your options sometimes. You have time, you have a rope. Not every turn needs to be done immediately. Some turns are more important than others. Some of them are a bit more, you know, uh, autopilot. This turn didn't feel very autopiloted. Uh, he swings. I'm pretty sure I just blocked a 4-4. With the jury rig. Okay, no cards can hurt us. I wonder what I do this turn. Pretty sure we're just um Okay, get excited. I'm prioritizing this, hey. In hindsight, maybe I just go face with this. But I think if I trim down his board, it may buy a bit more time. We'll see how the rest of the game plays out. He goes to the single combat, so here's the yeah, obviously um chances are he's not gonna hit the fizz. So you may as well take the value on the TF. Makes a lot of sense. Anyway, fizz is elusive. More curse keepers. At this point, do I swing with the coral creatures? Uh, I figure it doesn't make much of a difference really. Like the aristocrat just blocks it, and then I have a one one uh a one one on the field, or well, one HP is the more relevant part, and then Vile Feast is just a target for it. So I figure there's no point in really attacking. I can keep a blocker up permanently. Slider fan's pretty nice here. And repost looks pretty good. I seem to have a knack against the Marcia for stealing their reposts. Obviously, you can't steal champions with sleight of hand, which we're going to have an interesting game later <laughs> against a Nautilus deck. Ooh, 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 that was a spicy one. Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking about it now, dude. Holy shit. That was nutty. It was actually after we did some tweaks to the deck as well. So coming in here, I have no idea why he's not pulling the fizz. Oh, wait, he knows we have repost. Of course. But then I'm thinking like, wouldn't I just repost the coral creatures? No, I wouldn't do that. He knows I'm not that crazy. So if you guys don't know as well, Fizz's uh, spell is a playful trickster, which we can remove uh, attacking ally from combat to rally. Very interesting card. And I think we had a match with it. Not this game though, I don't think, but we, it may have been this game actually. We did some interesting things with the rally. Anyway, look at these double pilfered goods. Extra fizzes in the hand. I'm feeling like we just, uh... Actually, it's weird. I have to drop one of the pilfered goods to activate fizzes as elusive. Remembrance. Okay. Vile Feast. Oh yeah, I remember this turn. I couldn't. I think about this turn quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, but we end up reposting. I'm I'm looking at the playful trickster and how it works here, so it doesn't would not be as effective as I'd hope it would be. It would still die. But if I was to play for Trickster it right now, the Fizz would be able to attack again. I'm trying to see if I could double. I, I said I was going to double play for Trickster, but that wouldn't work because the unit's going to be dead. So I take it back quickly. And I realize I just have to repost here. It's just better for pushing damage. Plus, this is a perfect example of a time I forget Fizz is going to level up. Totally threw me off guard. That's something I should be tracking. It could have become relevant in some losses that we had. But the losses that we lose is just, we pretty much lost to like kegs when they do like AOE effects. We can play around make it rain with Fizz because it's a targetable card, but like Withering Whale and stuff generally just bums out Fizz quite a lot. And our Pilfered Goods here, all right? Or do we chum the waters because I'm worried about dying? I think the Pilfered Goods here is strictly better. 
But I actually can't remember what we did. I think I'm counting up the amount of damage he has on board. Thinking like, I think that's, that deck runs atrocity as well. So I'm trying to like count up that if he attacks me, what on board can kill me with atrocity? Some okay cards we got from him, but like, I'm looking for spells most of the time, like withering whales, stuff like that. Which I'm not sure if that, uh, the undying deck runs many of. Okay, he pulls a fizz. Fizz is definitely dying this turn, judging by the hand. Um, we pretty much just blocked the 4 4. Or do I tank the damage and keep the cutthroat on the field? Drew rigs a blocker. No, no, we, we don't take the damage here. We do not take the damage. The fist is in my hand. I think I'm going to win me the game. So that's all I'm worried about. Actually, no. What a surprise. This, is, this makes more sense. I don't know why I considered it. But as I said, Atrocity is the only card that I'm scared of. And yeah, there's like not enough damage on board. Plus a unit that he plays. Like maybe there's like some sort of weird Tiana play where he plays that and then atrocities next turn. But that would have been really strong for him here actually if he had Tiana and rallied against me, we would have pretty much lost, but unfortunately he didn't have it, I don't think. He just has his remembrance cards. We've got the free card draw there too from the uh, Redeemer. This has come back onto the field. We actually don't have a way to really protect it. We have slow spells that can't interact with his fast spells. So that's kind of spooky. Fortunately enough, I don't think he has really any answers to deal with it right now. And getting Fizz onto the field, coming back into our turn, allows us to spend more mana. So at this point, I'm just thinking, uh, do I just play something? Because like, he's probably not gonna be able to deal with Fizz. I don't think I need to flip mana. I don't know why I thought about this too much. It's obviously like, re-watching the game, like makes me realize like, the turn seems so obvious, but you know, during, when you're on the spot in the moment, it's a lot different. Hence why mistakes can happen. So Remembrance made a lot of sense. Pocket Ace is pretty cool. It's a good way to start this is elusive and just threaten lethal. At this point, I'm thinking like, okay, Vile Feast could be a card. But unfortunately, the fish wins. House always wins, dude. And we've been having a bit of crazy success climbing at the moment. Uh, I can't believe it. I think it was fun while it lasted, but um, definitely not sure how long this is going to last for. Don't worry, doesn't end there. Who we got next? Who is our next opponent? We'll see if we get one of these losses. Maybe it's worth to see just how bad the deck can perform. But at the same time, maybe we don't want to highlight that. Oh, dude, no, this isn't, this is, this is not a loss. This is another ridiculous game. Okay, so the Vi, I'm look right, right now I'm looking up like, what is this guy playing? I found a list, which I thought might have been the one. But in the end, it turned out it wasn't really. They just seemed like, they both have Vi and uh, Lucian, but some of the top end cards were just completely different. Um, pretty easy for Mulligan. This this Mulligan <laughs> Mulligan with this deck is so simple. But um, when I first started playing it, I would oftentimes Mulligan the Cutthroat as well, just trying to find fish for the Fizz. But then I realized you only have like a fifty percent chance of realistically finding Fizz in the opening hand. So, as I was stating earlier, it's going to be really important that we have another one drop that we can focus on, which I haven't been doing enough. Okay, I just fucking AFK on my opponent being a being a troll. I think I'm just reading Twitch chat. But, uh, hello? You gonna play the game, fake hero? Yeah, obviously, we're just gonna attack, right? I think I apologized. I'm like, sorry. The opponent, because I thought it wasn't our action. Here we go again, AFK. I 
don't think I'm running gotcha in this deck anymore. It was good for a bit because drawing it is helpful against mid range. Like if we had a drawing to gotcha here, that would have been a pretty good position to use it. Plays around Radiant Strike. Yeah, we'll play Cutthroat here. This is good. We'll keep the one mana. Set up some elusive units to attack in next turn. I don't think we block. Pass. Hello? Getting, I'm getting impatient with myself. <laughs> I'm such a fucking troll. Suit up! Great draw, dude. Unfortunately, we can't play sleight of hand this turn, but um, it is what it is. Also, suit up's a burst spell, so it plays around any actions too, which is nice. It's pretty easy 6-5 damage. I think what Fizz needs, like if a deck like this to work in the future, is better buffs in the Piltover. Because I'm pretty sure maybe Ionia if we do have a little bit of research like that. But Suit Up is just such a powerful card that I believe that it would be forever Fizz alongside P and Z for now. I mean, not forever, but like if we get different cards in the future that can allow us to reach out. Uh, realistically, I'd want P and Z to bring some sort of buff. I think they have, um, there's Mind Meld, which I looked at, which is an eight mana spell, which buffs your units by the amount of spells you played for this turn. But it's kind of eight mana and I want to like end the game sooner. When this game, when this deck draws right, it tends to end the games pretty quick. Okay, center illusion on both on the field. I think we just block, block the center. We use a jury rig and the core creatures to block both. So in terms of these units and who I want to die, you most of the time you just want Lucian to die. He's the more scary one to level up. <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, here's me trying to work out what's better to kill. And it was pretty obvious. Obvious to me now. Lucian provides a lot more of a threat. Sanders just double attacks, which is quite easy to deal with. War Chiefs comes down. So against Demacia, one of the cards I look for often times is uh, single combat. Rallies is okay. Rally for now, I can deal with the rally. But in general, the card I'm more concerned about and I continuously play around is rally. Plus the uh, AoE tough card can sometimes be annoying. But not often, more often times than not, not for this deck. I usually don't play around Rally enough though, and it probably costs me a lot of games. So I need to be wary of that. Coral Creatures is such a fun card though. I think it's a shame that Jettison falls into the pool of one mana spells, but it still ends up being a body that you paid one mana for, and spell mana and like it's pretty much just mana for us in this deck. So it becomes a 1 mana 1-2, one, gain a random spell. Which sometimes is good, sometimes not. 50-50. We also pull the, uh, I think it's a copies card. Which can sometimes be kind of funny. Where we make 4 copies of a card in hand. Shuffle it into your deck. Okay, here's an important turn. So this turn is going to be all about uh, playing around single combat and the gotcha and mystic shot 
We do something weird here. I'm going to see if I can remember it coming back into his rally's turn. We block in a way it doesn't look right, but at the same time plays around single combat. So we kind of uh, pivot around on his turn for a while. So this is usually the play. I think the Mystic Shot first then the gotcha so then um no i, I swear i pull this back no no, no yeah, that makes sense so the gotcha we wanted to go first so you don't actually use the gotcha first if you tr if you want the illusion to die afterwards you need to make sure you do this right spell order which is missing shot first and stack the gotcha above it so that it goes first i'll pull back it for a second so I, I forgot for a moment, I'm like, oh, the gotcha comes afterwards. Bear with me, I'm working it out. I had it right. Now I have it wrong. <laughs> oh, wait, no, yeah, no, no, here's where it looks weird. So I play around single combat. I can't remember what I'm speaking about. I should have really looked at it. But I think it's because I'm expecting, yeah, I leave a center alive for now. I let the center level up because I was thinking if he goes to single combat, then the center would die anyway. Wait, well, I don't know. I, I didn't really play around center at all. Play around so single combat, Jesus Christ. What, what the fuck was I thinking? I must have had an idea of what was happening. Oh, in the end, that turn happened. He didn't have single combat, or he chose not to play it. So I blocked the 2 3. And leave the Lucian. Oh, I don't Mystic Shot because if he has a single combat, he's just going to do it anyway. Right, okay, okay. No, I did that for a reason. I remember now, the Mystic Shot would have gone to waste. So I think it's just let the center level up and then just uh, attempt to kill the Lucian. And if he wants a single combat, I won't give him the belly from the Mystic Shot. Or force him to just kill his unit for free. Uh, Mystic Shot, what a find. So I'm letting my 4-2 go down here. Oh yeah, I can't take a double attack, I'll be dead. How are we going to get out of this situation? How am I going to get out of this situation? TF for cycles, good. I think that's clearly the play. Trying to figure out what cards he has here. But yeah, on the list I saw, it didn't have Cythria. So that's why I was a bit confused. Another Sifria. This is looking, uh, rough. Ooh, decent find. Decent find. So by the end of this turn, I, I figure out they're playing the augmented experiments is to play. Pretty sure I rummage first. I feel like I rummage. And then I'll play the augment, uh, the augmented experiment comes down and hits the center. I think if I rummage, I would possibly lose some cards. So I don't think I'd do that. Uh, no, we rummage. Man, what am I doing? Make your decision. I consider just playing Scythria here. Oh no, I do. Holy shit, what a big brain. I play Scythria, I guess I'm trying to push for value here. I consider swinging. And I think I have to, because when Cythria re-attacks us, like if I kill a Cythria, it ends up pretty good. I think I just chill. I don't swing here. I'm just trying to keep blockers up. Obviously, the TF would block the Cythria, and then the Cythria would block the Vi, because most likely, no, the Vi would drag in the TF. Um, so I attack. 
No, I don't. I'm fucking stressing out. I think I'll wait for him to make a mistake here, which is to not open attack. So I can play the Elemental Experimenter, which I don't think he does. He could have easily open attacked here. And he doesn't choose to do that. I think that was a big mistake playing the Badger Bear here. I remember this. So the Augmented Experimenter hits the center now. It's just the play. I think we used a Rummage to disc discard these two. We'll most likely find cheap enough spells to play. We're sitting on nine mana. We get some pretty much uh, good, great draws. So I can play the Coral Creatures here and get the mana back for Mystic Shot. I think I spent a bit of time trying to work out where the Mystic Shot goes. It might have mannered, but I think I ended up just sending, sending it into the face. So at this point I'm pretty much hoping to find... Oh, there's the classic, the one and only Jettison. <laughs> at this point, I just want to find the Elusive Fizz to try and end the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking where's the music shot going? And do I even play the Mystic Shot? That's a question as well. I think I do, which might have been a mistake, but I don't think, there's any, don't think there's any cards I could have drawn to make a difference with the mana I'm using now. Like maybe I leveled up Fizz, I'd have mana for it. I don't, no, I don't. I don't play the Mystic Shot. I figure I need to find Fizz for a blocker. Because of how much damage he has on board. I can't even play Fizz anyway. We're only sitting on spell mana. Man, I'm a little fucking need to get a coffee or something. Leveling up TF was pretty cool as well, but not too relevant. Actually, no, super relevant. No, not really relevant. Because <laughs> he pulls the uh, TF anyway from the Vi. The Augmented Experimenter can block the Badger Bear and we can just chump block the uh, Cythria. Don't know why I choose to use the Coral Creatures when I could have used the Jury Rig. But I don't think it really mattered, but it wasn't as optimal. I think about if I want to take 5 damage or not. I don't think it's going to matter too much. I think if I avoid taking more damage, maybe I get another turn somehow. Putting the damage on the Badger Bear might be relevant. Like Mystic Shot, perhaps. Fortunately, we can't play the Pick a Card. It's looking grim. It is looking hella grim. So Fizz obviously comes down. We found Rummage, which is great. So the Fizz can get us Chum the Waters, which is 5-1. Uh, We're not really worried about the vulnerable that the slow spell gives, but the body that we get can help us block against Fearsome. He plays a Ranger. I'm like, that, 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 that's, that's okay. It's not too spooky. Rummage. Suit up. Not a bad find. Guildford Goods. These are decent cards right now. At this point, I can't play around single combat. Which I thought at this point he had. Because I hadn't seen one all game. Now I started thinking, is he even running single combat? Like maybe that's what re replaced Vi. I don't know. Double Silver Wings, uh, pretty much Pilfered Goods. How much you got? Oh, ho ho. Interesting cards. The Bannerman's pretty irrelevant, but this Concert, cons, concerted Strike? Concerted Strike. Very interesting. It's the first time I honestly actually looked at the card. But you actually choose two allies to attack one, to strike one. I start thinking about single combat once again, but at this point, like, it's got to be obvious that he hasn't had it. Why am I, why am I thinking about it? Doesn't matter who I, vulnerable, I think I just forgive vulnerable to Sithra. 
in case it becomes relevant. I don't think it really will be relevant, but it would be. I think there's one there's one opportunity where the jury the scrap bots can actually pull the Cythria and then maybe allowing the overwhelmed shark to get a little bit of chip damage. That's actually not insanely irrelevant. This is playful trickster. So it only works on attacking allies, by the way, so you can't really remove a defending ally to make it work. It looks like we're dead, but there's actually a way to survive here, which is actually insane when I look at this board state. And that is the fact that we stole this concerted strike. I make a little bit of a misplay here. I guess you can call it a misplay, but it's more like different lines to take. So I use both my jury rigs to strike the um, ranger. Which is like the the, the range is not the misplay at all. Like that's the one that we have to hit because it has scout and it can attack again. But the fact that I'm using both of my jury rigs to strike it is like the mistake. Because if he has single combat or something to do, no, if he has tough, if he was to grant the scout tough for whatever reason, these jury rigs would not kill it. So what I should have done was use the uh, shark to target it with the concerted strike. So I don't think it's going to matter, like, if I kill the far right silver wing or not. Like, it doesn't matter about his board state at all. All I got to do is survive and hope that I can kill him next turn. So I should have 100% used the shark this turn. Because we're not going to survive another turn. That was definitely a misplay, but I ended up working anyway, so that's fine. We lose Fizz. We have the extra one in hand. That playful trickster becomes a Fizz. At this point... I want to play Fizz before the turn starts because uh, just to avoid any slow plays that might get me, like a rally. So it has to be Fizz. I think about it, I'm like, can he kill it? I don't think so. I, I must still be thinking about single combat. I'm actually insane. There is no way he has it. I, surely I'm not thinking about single combat. I'm thinking more about the fact that uh, do I need? Can I afford to play Fizz now? It doesn't matter. I pass it back to him anyway. He just plays War Chiefs. I just keep passing. So I guess I figure I have to play Fizz when I have a spell alongside it. That's actually an insane top deck. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you can see how this game's gonna turn out in a second. Uh, they get excited to the face and the Fizz gets elusive and it's a GG. This is a weird game though. Like I think he may have drew pretty poorly. Like he didn't find rallies or, like I wasn't sure what he was running in his deck, but he wasn't finding the cards that he needed. <laughs> There's nothing else to do, man. There's no other play here. It's just get excited to the face, hope for the best. I'm a bit disappointed that I took that long to really wait up the <laughs> the only option. Can't believe I took that long on that turn. That's embarrassing. Look at that. How tilted would you be though, losing to a player like me, some trash idiot who takes his time on a turn like that? <laughs> I'm actually toxic. Sorry if I'm mumbling a little bit. This game was a little bit of a head spin for me. Let's proceed to the last game, the one I'm probably the most excited for against the deep monsters. Okay, so we're joining this game just a little bit late. Um, I was in a different screen while the match started uh, on stream. So he pretty much opened up with the 2-1 uh, and uh, tossed some cards. And then I just played my uh, elusive unit on turn one. Now this match, this is the highlight of the day right here. 
This was an insane matchup against the uh, Deep Monsters deck. So we didn't unfortunately start off with Fizz, but that's okay. We do have Suit up there, but it hasn't got the, you know, drawing it on curve and then getting the two mana reduction, which makes it so powerful sometimes. But we're gonna plow through this game, see what we can do. I honestly wasn't expecting to have that much of a competitive game here, but it did get a lot more competitive than I expected. And it's due to some of the nonsense that happened with some plunders and stealing of cards. First few turns are just kind of like, you know, autopilot. We swing with the 1-2, I don't mind trading off the 2-1. He's in Blige Water, so any opportunity I get to clear his minions, just for whatever reason, he may be running plunder cards. Just I may as well just be productive and attacking. Mind me while I skipped across there for a sec. I was just saying hello to one of the viewers. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Anyway. I think one way that you could possibly win this matchup is just by hopefully starting off with a strong suit up unit and just going face over and over. But when he plays like the Dead Bloom here, it's something I have to clear because it has lifesteal. And for me to win this matchup, it has to be just pure aggression. I think most of the time, this is how a deck wants to run, right? We want to hope to find the elusive units on level one. Sorry, find the elusive units on turn one and then buff them. Pretty straightforward players. Plays. Counterfeit copies. Looks good. Why would I be considering not suiting up this turn? Very strange play on my behalf. In hindsight, I think I'm being too greedy for the pilfered goods. Maybe a part of me thinks that like I have to try and like steal some cards from him. I think I may have been just been having a little bit of fun at this point. Uh, probably would have to imagine that suiting up there was clearly the play. But here we are. What am I talking about? I must have had some idea of what I was doing. Pilfered goods though, I don't mind activating it now. Like we miss out on four damage or three damage this turn. But we get to steal some cards. I think I may be explaining how the deck works to a viewer. Okay, so we inevitably play a Pilfered Goods after the fact that we didn't use the suit up to push damage. So we get a Thorny Toad and a Yebi Wand. The Yebi Wand is kind of tripping me out. I'm surprised that's there. So give an enemy vulnerable and if we kill it, we get to draw a card. So pick a card. I think Thorny Toad's a great target for it. We're not going to be really wanting to use it anytime soon. So pick a card, by the way, is a card that uh, you shuffle one card into your deck and you'll be cycling the next turn and drawing three. Nah, that could have been a very easy withering whale for my opponent. So, obviously doesn't have it. I'm not sure if Sea Monsters even runs withering whale. This is pretty interesting. Raise scale hunter, giving my unit vulnerable. Uh, interesting decision of text for my opponent. This this might be what made this match a little bit more competitive. It could be the um, choices of cards. Doesn't seem like a bad card though. Uh, what is it? 5 mana 4-4 four, four to give an enemy vulnerable. Helps you clear elusive units. We'll play the rummage here to discard the cards. We haven't got enough mana to play most of them anyway, so we can utilize them as rummage targets. So I pass. He goes for the vulnerable. I think I go for the get excited here. Seems like a fair play. We'll clear his unit. Because it has scout as well. I don't really want it to be attacking over and over. I don't think we use this counter for copies at any point. I think we may use it later in the game. So next turn looks pretty straightforward. Like we'll hope maybe we'll top deck Fizz. Okay. 
Call creatures we find. I think it's. I think we play suit up here. And just hit the face and use pilfered goods. Suiting up, let's go. Uh, it could be an option to pick a card as well, but I think the pilfered, pilfered good. Uh, the pilfered goods just seems like, you know, we've been sticking to the strategy of just absolutely going for the pilfering, so we may as well stick to it. Dark Order Scourge is not going to be too useful for us. And <laughs> we, we found the, um, uh, what's it called? Deep Sea Monster. That was a pretty good find. You'll never know what cards we truly have. The Scourge may come in handy for if he has some big units he wants to attack him with. Because the block of the Nautilus or something after it's flipped. He's jetting. Jettison again. So these are uh, versions obviously focused a lot on going deep as soon as possible. Which against us is probably not as effective. So I think they cut some other utility cards to fit in Jettison. But then again, I'm pretty sure most of the lists are running Jettison now, right? I have to double look that up. Jettison's a funny card. Jettison is like literally one of the most funniest cards I've seen in Runeterra so far. Now uh, we finally find the fish. When all this comes down, I realize I don't really have a way of dealing with this once it's flipped. <laughs> I'm a whole man. Uh, what do we play here? I think I toss up a little bit on this turn because I'm like, trying to figure out what should block this Nautilus. I think this is an okay opportunity to Scourge because he has no mana to really like outplay it or do anything funny. Like there, wouldn't, there isn't really any cards you can do to deal with it. This pretty much denies him from attacking. Well, it doesn't deny him, but... Like, there was no point in swinging. But then he plays the EB Wand, and that's like really good here. Which makes my Scourge feel kind of useless now. Because the Scourge was pretty much to deny his attack. But now, he opens up with that. And here we are, we're on the back foot. Trying to work out what to do next. I could play Fizz's turn, right? I'll obviously wait till after he attacks though, in case there's another EB warned. I want to risk the Fizz getting taken out. So now that the attack's done, we'll play Fizz. We can protect it from Vile Feast. That's what I was thinking about here, another example of me forgetting about the fact that it's flipped. And it takes six spells to flip. Is. It is not hard at all. He starts playing some big monsters. I play my little coral creature. <laughs> <laughs> mushroom Clam is actually kind of useful. It's kind of funny because if he starts to go through his deck and thin it out more, Mushroom Clown finds a lot more value. You know, on my, one of my first um, prototypes in this deck was uh, Fizz Teemo, actually. But, um,. In the end, like maybe Teemo could still be a fit for this deck as a target, but uh, I'm using the Cutthroat because it has Fearsome as well. Maybe we'll try putting Teemo back in. They could both, they pretty much both accomplish the same goal. And I couldn't think of many reasons why Teemo wouldn't be the better fit. And then I think about it, maybe perhaps it could be the play. Perhaps we'll go back to Teemo. I think the fearsome tag on the elusive unit doesn't come into relevancy too often. So I, I think we might go back to Teemo now that I think about it. Uh, giving vulnerable to something here, I don't know if it becomes relevant, but we do just want to put up blockers. None of these sea monsters have fearsome, fortunately enough. So 
so that's okay. He gets a plate worm egg. Plate worm egg in hand. I can repeat. I can see it. I don't think the vulnerable really achieves anything, so I just hold on to it. It's looking really grim. He is on 9 HP though, and we are going to cycle through our deck and find some goodies. Oh, the sleight of hand. The sleight of hand, ladies and gentlemen. He plays a treasure trove. Treasure trove, hey? Bunch of random cards. <laughs> Looks like I've got my serious face on. We're in it to win it. Lots of different ways we can play out this turn. I think what I end up doing is playing the sea monster though here. Just as, it just is a blocker. So we'll suit up Fizz. Then he starts showing off all these random goodies that he got. Fortunately enough, I don't think he found anything too valuable to really impact this game in the state that it's at right now. This Mystic Shot, I consider maybe hitting the 4-2, but I just pass for now. This Mystic Shot should go face. If I considered not, like I don't think the Mystic Shot should hit the 4-2 anyway. He starts playing like these mentors and stuff, I'm thinking that that's kind of like, I don't know, I can't get a read for what he's doing. Obviously I, I have no idea what his random cards are. So I decided to go with the sea monster. Just as a blocker. Because I haven't got any other units in hand, so I can't really set up the wide board. Because I want to make sure I can block like, you know, Nautilus. I thought it was pretty weird that like, he did that. How he like, mentored the toad, buffed it, and then put it down. Don't know if it was just better off just saving his mana. EB warned on Fizz. So we're gonna Mystic Show his face. We don't want Fizz to get targeted here at any cost. With the Mushroom Cloud to play in case there's another spell, but nothing can deal with it. Here comes the Porohoda. I think he was trying to heal there. And I don't think he realizes that when you actually obliterate a card, you don't receive its last breath, uh, last breath effect, sorry. So that was kind of like a bit of a mistake on our opponent's end. He's obviously like, hasn't done his research, but that's okay. We all have to learn. Sometimes we learn from it actually happening physically in a game. I know that it took me a while to learn some of these little interactions I didn't understand until they happen during a game, usually resulting in a loss. You learn more from your losses than you do from your victories. He gives protection to his vulnerable, I guess for anyone to get the buff. Would that be the best target? Maybe I'd consider that giving the buff to one of the 10 eights is better, or even one of the 4 2. Yeah, he really dragged on this turn for a long time. Where I feel like if I was in, if I was in his position, I probably would have just fucking. Dragged all my units into the attack, hope for the best. I mean, I'm sitting on one mana. But he's, he's weighing up his options. In case there's maybe a way I can value block. And then the, the vengeance comes down. He actually found a zero mana vengeance from the treasure trove. I didn't notice until just watching this game. But wow. Super lucky that we had a one mana spell in hand. At burst speed, because uh, counterfeit coins wouldn't have worked because it's to pick out a unit from hand. It's 
So I decided to take value blocks with the um, 7-5. Just in case it comes, becomes relevant having an extra unit on board. I consider taking a block with Fizz. We inevitably decide that we take a value block with the 7-5 and then don't block with the Fizz. Uh, just considering that Astrocity is a card. So that's what we're trying to play around. In the end, I think I decide that I don't beat Astrocity. And because if I block, there's a chance a Vile Feast can get... A Vile Feast can actually kill my Fizz. But in hindsight, I should be researching what the decks possibly could have. Because maybe I can beat Astrocity if I block here. Interestingly enough, I can't be a Vile Feast. Too many cards to play around, I decided let's just not lose to Astrocity. Let's just not play around Astrocity, sorry. And beat Vile Feast. Of course we top deck like a god. I'm trying to think because I need to open up for uh... I need to give Fizz Elusive first. I'm trying to think what's the best way to do this. Like, I could just get excited and hit his face. Does make a lot of sense. But because Ye Be Warned is like, if I do that, I have no way to react to a card that targets Fizz after that. If that makes sense. Because I only have slow spells and counterfeit copies is not hitting anything. So I take a slow play here. A little bit risky. Could have gone for the win here. We'll have to wonder if that's, that's a mistake or not. But fortunately enough, <laughs> he plays fucking Ruination. He played Ruination. I'm like, holy shit. May have lost the game because I played slow. I was playing around too many cards. Yeah, maybe maybe it was just play to get excited and go in there, so... We'll see. But now I find myself in a weird position where I usually get excited. <laughs> right. I usually get excited. I'm going to plunder him. Because he has no mana to play the plate worm egg. So I'm going to slight of hand. The plate worm egg most likely. Because I'm convinced that last card in his hand is Maokai, right? I even go ahead and see. If the other slight of hand steals his card. <laughs> Look at me, I'm not even reacting. I'm just so serious in the game. I think that Ruination threw me off guard. I didn't expect him to blow up his own board just to beat the Fizz. So I play this, I'm, I'm convinced it's Maokai, and spoiler alert, it, it, it's Maokai or an Ella Nautilus, one or the other. And he just surrenders on the spot. And that is the end of the Fizz suit up journey. Ladies and gentlemen, I do hope you enjoyed this. I would have loved to have just had the original footage, but as there was music uh, playing over the game, we were not able to uh, really use it appropriately. So here we are commentating over it. Like, in the end, is Fizz viable option? Probably not, unfortunately. But did we have a good win streak this day? We sure did, and I had a ton of fun playing it too. Like, sometimes you've got to have fun. And slamming, slamming meta decks all day can really drive you insane. It drives me insane. It doesn't even take me all day. It takes me like a couple matches, and I'm just... I, need, I, I can't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, would you be so kind as to leave a like? And consider subscribing. We'll be posting daily Runeterra uh, Rune content now. Videos similar to these where we talk about a deck in depth towards the start of the video. We have a few games. Goodbye.